I got a PM a couple of days ago from Theo Warner. Nice to hear from you again, Theo. Anyway, he sent me an email, a PM, and in the PM he linked to an unlisted video of his. And he said he was going to send this video to people that he thought would be able to look at the video and respond with an interesting outlook on what he was presenting. Now that's great because flattery is always good to get. Thank you, Theo. But joking aside, Theo sent me that video for some reason. He thinks I'm interesting. And um, he showed me, in that video, he showed me a painting. And this is the painting, right here. The painting is called There Were No Flowers Tonight. And it's by Ivan Albright, an American painter. Um, he is known for his realistic portrayal of things, apparently. I'm not... I'm not very up to date with art, I'm afraid. But anyway, he showed me this painting and he asked me then basically, you know, what is my reaction to that painting? What does that make me think of? And can I say something of interest about it? That's a good question. So anyway, looking at the painting, the first thing that strikes me and I guess this is also um, a side effect or this is caused by the, the sort of realistic painting that it is. And the first thing that, that strikes me on this is that this is a woman who is dressed as a ballerina. So by the looks of it, this is a professional performer. She is out there on stage doing her ballet. That's her job, that's her, her chosen career or something of that nature. And from the title of the painting and her whole demeanor, it looks like after, you know, she doesn't look like a spring chicken, let's be honest. She doesn't look like she's a young and vigorous ballerina um, who is at the pinnacle of her career. On the contrary, she looks a bit to put it very uncharitable, uncharitably, she looks a bit beyond her sell-by date as a ballerina. And the title of the video suggests that to, during tonight's performance, it has hit home to her that the days of this undying admiration, her being the prima donna, whatever you call it, the main performer on stage and people adoring her art and her performances, that those days are pretty much over now. And that is that presents us with a very interesting perspective then. You see, given that this is the case, given, you know, my interpretation of what I'm seeing and assuming that that is what he was trying to portray, you can't help but think, well, what now? Her career is over. She's sitting there. She is, you know, beyond her time as a ballerina. It's never going to come back. She's only going to get even older. And what now? Is her life over? Is that it? The end, nothing else to look forward to. And that is, of course, not true. But the thing is that if you have experienced a certain level of joy, of being celebrated as whoever you are, fame, success in your work, in your career, as a performer, or whatever else, and then you realize that that time is gone. And this, does, this applies just as much to anybody, whether you're famous or not. You know, we all tend to live this kind of life that goes up into a peak. You perform at the, at the best of your abilities. You have some sort of a career or whatever else. You settle down into a routine at the very least, even if 
you're not a career person, if you're not somebody who, you know, joins in with the rat race or whatever you want to call it, you still get to this point where you settle down into some sort of a routine. This is your life and everything seems to be in a state of stasis or whatever you want to call it, where things seem to just be the same from day to day. This is the way things are and it's very easy to kid yourself to start thinking that this is going to be the way it is forever and then the time of the decline comes. You get older and suddenly you are no longer able to do whatever it is you do and then what? Now of course, there are some exceptions to this rule. You know, you could be <laughs> James Dean, for all I care, and die young in, at the top of your powers. But even then, you know, that's still the end of it. Time out. Over. So, putting that aside, if you're leading the kind of n normal, normal life, the, the sort of, you know, youth, peak of performance, and decline with old age, you're going to get to this point where you know you're in a very similar position to this this ballerina here in this painting and the time of your peak performances is going to be over and it's very easy to then sit back and think to yourself that's it now my life is over and of course that's nonsensical you are just in a position where now you need to adjust to a different set of circumstances. Now, what we are seeing in this picture, in this in this painting, is something kind of, you know, like a Greek tragedy, almost. It's an exaggerated depiction of what happens to all of us if we are lucky enough to grow old enough for this to happen to us. But in the end, we all eventually enter this phase of a physical and probably even mental decline which can be a very gentle slope or very steep but in which we eventually have to face up to the fact that we are no longer able for doing whatever it was we liked to do what we were good at what we were comfortable with in our youths and the one thing that I think would be the biggest mistake for anybody finding themselves in that position is to live in a world of regret, of pining for that time in the past that will never come back. That would be a mistake. This ballerina in this picture here is not ever going to be a famous celebrity on the stage dancing Swan Lake ever again. That time is over. But she is still alive. She is still participating in reality. She is still here. And she has still got within herself the power to give herself a new purpose in life, a new perspective on life a new meaning in her life that is in line with her current abilities, with what she can do now, what she is capable of now. I don't want to sound like Eckhart Toll or Tolly or whatever his name is here, but the trick to dealing with this curve that we all go through in life is to start living in the here and now take things as they come today and do with that what you can what is wrong i think with a lot of people is that they live in this world in which the main force behind their existence their main line of thought is based on a sense of entitlement they think the universe owes them something. And the most 
the clearest example of this absurd outlook on life is of course antinatalism. Yeah, I went there. Antinatalism is the most pathetic sulk about reality that I've ever come across. The, these people seem to be stuck in the position where they think the universe owes them some sort of existence in which it is all happy, happy, lucky, lucky. And any time that this isn't the case, they sit back and mope about it and blame the universe for it all, rather than getting off their asses, living in the moment, and taking their own lives in their own hands and dealing with it. That is a way of life, of course. But it's not very satisfactory, is it? And this is something we all have to face. Whether it's at the peak of our abilities, where we think that it's going to be perfect forever, and, you know, the fun is never going to end, or when we finally hit that brick wall where we start realizing that we're getting older, that we cannot do what we used to do in our youth anymore, and so on, there comes the point where you're going to realize that it's not all going to fall into your lap. If you want something out of reality, you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to put the effort in yourself. And that is as true now as it will be in 50 years when you're old and decrepit. It's never going to change until the day you die. Fun, isn't it? <laughs>